Bad Night May 3. Hope, I hope you have a wonderful time with your family. Even though in a hard time like this year with COVID, but and I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Today, Teacher Diana will pray for us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. I know that our situation is very different this year because of COVID and that we are unable to gather together to celebrate Christmas Sunday. Please continue to be with us as we spend our Christmas Sunday at home with our family. We might feel scared or worried sometimes due to the situation, but I know that you're with us. Thank you for giving us strength and for keeping us safe from getting sick. I pray that we would learn to love one another and that we would be able to glorify your name with one heart and voice. Please strengthen us with your faith. I pray that you would open our ears, hearts, and minds as we listen to your word today. Please give us listening ears and help us not to get distracted by things around us. During this time, I pray that we will be able to give our full attention to you. I truly hope that we will learn how important it is to constantly depend on you and to turn to you whether we are happy or sad. Please bless our pastor, teachers, and our children, and I pray that through you, we will continue to grow in the glory and spirit of your holy name. In your most holy and precious name, amen.
Today's passage is taken from Matthew 1, 18 to 23, and the title of today's message is The Name of Jesus, Matthew 1, 18 to 23. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Amen. Amen. Okay, my lovelies. So today we're in the book of Matthew, and it's the first of the four Gospels. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it was the first Gospel to be written of the four. Then why do you think it's placed as the first book in the New Testament, the first of the four Gospels? Well, what do we know about Matthew? We know very, very little about this man, this person named Matthew. In fact, nowhere, nowhere in the Gospel of Matthew does it even say that someone called Matthew wrote this book. But from the earliest of times, we've just sort of assumed and agreed that a man named Matthew wrote the Gospel of Matthew. What do we know about what? Sorry, what we know about Matthew is that he was an apostle and a one-time tax collector. But other than, the, other than that, we know very, very little of him. Oh, and, and that he was probably Jewish. But other than that, we know very, very little about him. The thing is, however, the thing is who Matthew was isn't the important part of the Gospel of Matthew. What this name what this man named Matthew had to say, the story he had to tell, the message he had to share. That's what makes the gospel of Matthew so important. Okay, so now back to my original question. Y'all know how easily sidetracked I get. What was my question again? Oh yeah, why is the gospel of Matthew placed as the first book slash gospel of the New Testament? Well, Matthew had a very, very specific message to share. Yes, all the Gospels are about who? About Jesus. All the Gospels are about Jesus. But they all have different parts of Jesus' story that they choose, that they choose to tell. Jesus, yeah, that they choose to tell and focus on. And Matthew, what does he, what does he in his Jesus story, what does he focus on? Well, what Matthew does is in his Jesus story of all the gospel writers, he connects Jesus to the story of, to the story of Israel most clearly. Like he even begins Jesus' story with Jesus' family tree, starting with Abraham. Abraham, who was, who was, who was the father of Yep, you got it. Who is the father of Israel? And in today's passage, Matthew even says that the angel of the Lord appeared to who? To Joseph in a dream and called him Joseph, son of David. David was who, y'all? David was Israel, Israel's greatest what leader. Israel's greatest leader and Israel's greatest king. And Joseph was who, y'all? Yep, Joseph was Jesus' earthly father. Did y'all know that only Matthew, that only Matthew mentions uh, Jesus, sorry, Joseph's, only Matthew mentions Joseph's dream in the nativity story? Did y'all know that? Okay, anyways, moving along. That's not the main point. You see, so Matthew was sort of the guy to connect the Old Testament, the storytelling of the Old Testament with the new. And what Matthew does is he repeatedly, he repeatedly shows how the events of Jesus's life took place, like how they happened for what 
reason? To fulfill. To fulfill what the Lord said through the prophets. Even in today's passage, in verse 22, Matthew says, all this, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord said through the prophet. Okay, y'all, so which prophet? I'll give you a hint. We went over his stuff last week. Yep, the prophet I, I, Isaiah. Oh, a side note. Well, like sort of a side apology. Last week, I was like all over the place. And I don't know if you guys caught this, but I said Jeremiah when I went to say Isaiah. Yeah, sorry about that. You see, it's because we were QTing Jeremiah and then it sort of meshed up into one big ball in my head. And then I was like mixing up the names of the prophets. This never happens to you guys? This never happens to you guys? Well, it happens to me all the time. It happens to me quite a lot. Okay, so sorry. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> but let's, okay, back to Matthew. Back to Matthew saying that all of this happened because God, through prophets, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, years ago, my English slipped there, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, said that it would. Matthew's gospel is all about making sure that people understood that Jesus didn't come to abolish, like to end, God's law and what the prophets had to say, but to fulfill it, to make it come to life. So when Matthew says in today's passage, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, he was probably talking about Isaiah, who said this 700 years ago. In Isaiah 7, 13 to 14, Isaiah 7, 13 to 14, if you guys have your Bibles, could you please turn to Isaiah 7, 13, 7, 13 to 14, and let's read it together. Okay, Isaiah 7, 13 to 14. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Amen. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him, what? And will call him Emmanuel. And that's exactly what ha what happened in today's passage, right? From verses 20, uh, sorry, from verses 18 to 20. What That's what the angel tells Joseph, right? The angel tells Joseph that Mary will give birth to a son and that he is to name him Jesus. Why y'all? Why all? Because Jesus means Savior. And the angel tells Joseph that Jesus will save his people from their sins. My babies, we have a Savior, and his name is Jesus. This is our gospel. This is our gospel. We have a king. We have a king that has the power and the love to save us from our own sins. What other king has this sort of power? What other king cares about our sins? What other king cares if we live or die? Only Jesus, y'all. Only Jesus. But it doesn't just end there. In verse 23, Matthew continues. Oh, and also Isaiah said this as well. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Guys, what does Emmanuel mean? It means God with us. Jesus is Emmanuel. Through the birth of Jesus, we know that God is, God is with us. He's not some king who lives over in a faraway land. Some king who doesn't care about us or love or who doesn't even like love us. God is our king. He's our king who cares about us and loves us so much that he sent his one and only son to die sorry, that he sent his one and only son to live, to live among us 2,000 years ago to show us that he loves us. What's John 3.16, y'all? You have this memorized in your head, right? What's John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have, but have eternal life. My lovelies, do you believe in the name of Jesus? Do you believe in the name Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus came to save his people from their sins? Do you believe that God is with us all the time? If you do, 
then I'm sure you all will have a merry, merry Christmas. Because that's what Christmas is all about, right? Remembering that God, that God himself came to be among us to show us how much to show us how to live, to show us how to love, to save us from our sins, and to show us how much he loves us. Jesus is God's fulfilled law of love and God's greatest, greatest promise to us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being our good, good Father. Thank you for showing us how much you love us by sending your son, by sending your son to us 2,000 years ago to just like, to just live among us and just be with us, to show us that we matter to you. And because we matter to you, our eternity matters to you. Every part of our being matters to you, God. What other king what other king cares for us this much? What other king loves us this much? No other king, Lord, only you. And Father God, you, you are our king. You are our savior. And only you can save us. Thank you. Thank you for being the one to save us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay, so are you, are you all ready for part two of our service? You have your workbooks out? You have your workbooks out? Okay, so what's the date? We are turning to the 20th of December, the 20th of December, which is page 40. Are y'all on page 40? Okay, so I'm gonna, wait, y'all pause me. Pause me, and then we'll go over it together. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, unpause me now. Y'all have unpaused me, right? We're, we're doing this together, right? Okay, question one. Underline all the sentences that begin with the word for that begin with the word for well i found uh well in the english version there's four in verse four and four in verse six but the main one is verse six so let's read verse six together for for unto us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace. So I underlined um, verses four and six, but verse, verse six is the main one. Uh, question two, what happened to the people walking in darkness and the people living in the land of the deep? Hmm? Sorry, guys. <laughs> and the people living in the land of the deep darkness. The answer is in verse two. And I found the people walking in darkness saw great light. So the people walking in darkness, they saw great light and a light dawned upon, like dawned on. So came upon, a light came upon the people living in the land of deep darkness. So the people walking in darkness saw great light and a light came upon the people living in the land of deep darkness. Number three, what is the name of the child God gave us? What is the name of the child God gave us? And the answer is in verse six. We just read it together, y'all. So what's the name? Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Do you guys notice how there isn't a and at the end? Like there isn't an and after everlasting father and prince of peace. It just, it's just a, like, it's just a list. There's no end. And what I think, I think this is because, why do you think this is because? I think it's because this is God. This is God. And God isn't this and this and this and this and this. God is just God. God is just simply God. And everything that is good is God. So he's singular in that sense. Okay. Well, um, yes, it's Christmas. I hope you guys have a merry, 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 merry Christmas and um, eat lots of sweet stuff. <laughs> merry Christmas, y'all.